What is up guys, welcome back to the channel, it's James from CopLogic and we're back, real football is back, the international break is over, England were fantastic, as usual. But you didn't win sh what the hell is even that? Um, but real football is back, the Premier League is back and look at that, it's match day 30 of 38, we are in the big time now, it is the race to the title there's still three teams in it and probably the biggest thing about this weekend is there is one game that is bigger than ours and that is manchester city versus arsenal both of them are title rivals and a guarantee this weekend that one of them if not both hopefully will be dropping points this weekend which is absolutely huge i'm not even sure which way benefits us most to be completely honest but you know obviously the ideal result is that there's a draw there the guarantee is one if not both of them will be dropping points this weekend so liverpool have to capitalize in their game against brighton it is at anfield Field. I mean, look at those Opta stats there. Liverpool 71%. They've given us the lion's share of the percentage there. So, you know, we have to win this game. It's a must win. We can go top of the table because we play before the City game, which is at the Etihad, by the way. So you've got to put City as favourites. The chances are they win that game, but any slip in the road for them is good for us. So let's wait and see what happens there. But we've got a chance to leapfrog Arsenal and go top of the table before that game even kicks off. And we absolutely have to take advantage of that. So this is your match preview for Liverpool versus Brighton. So as always, before we get into the team, let's take a look statistically at what's going on with these two teams. So during the last seven meetings between Liverpool and Brighton at Anfield specifically, Liverpool have won four times with two draws and one loss. Uh, or, you know, one win to Brighton, whatever way you want to look at it now. That kind of shows that, you know, although it's dominant for Liverpool, this could be a banana skin. And Brighton, I do think, are one of those teams where even right now in poor form, you would expect them to lose. You just never know. You, you have to be careful, is what I'm saying. You cannot underestimate the potential that Brighton have. In the last 16 games, Liverpool have won nine against Brighton with three wins to Brighton and overwhelming dominance for Liverpool, as I said. But certainly, you know, it's not cut and dry that Liverpool are going to win this game based on those stats. You would expect it though, especially with injuries, which we'll get into in a second. Last season's meeting at Anfield was a 3-3 draw, but again, you know, there is a caveat there that Liverpool were not great last season, and this season we're, we're challenging for a title. We were challenging on all four fronts. Already got one trophy under our belt this season. We're still in the Europa League. We are still very much in this title race with a chance in literally this game to go top of the table. So yeah, it's a totally different Liverpool to last year. And I wouldn't take too much away from that. We're still on a 31 game undefeated streak at home as well and Brighton conversely have lost their last three games away in a row so hugely positive home record for Liverpool and a terrible away re record for Brighton you would hope culminates in the perfect outcome for Liverpool and that is a win at Anfield and hopefully a dominant win if we actually look at you know team news we still got Robbo who we're not sure of but we think he's okay so I'll be honest I don't expect him to start in this game we'll get into that in a second when we pick teams but probably an appearance maybe off the bench um, Nunes is fit he he took his time off away from the uh, national team to stay at Liverpool and not sure if that was a tactical injury or not by Jurgen Klopp but whatever it's worked out because he's fit and he's ready to play. In terms of the big injuries we've still got Alisson out, we've still got Trent out and we've still got Jota out but Brighton themselves are in a little bit of trouble injury wise. Karim Matoma is out for the rest of the season and probably one of the greatest players to ever play the game. James Milner will not feature in this game because he's got a bit of a thigh issue so that's positive news for us if we're being honest. It takes a little bit of a threat um, all jokes aside, Karen Matona is a great player and that takes a little bit of threat away from them. So speaking of injuries, let's take a look at my team prediction for this game. So obviously no surprise here with Alisson Alcu and Kelleher starts. Again, I say this every time, but he's doing an exceptional job. So no issues there. For the two centre-backs, both are fit and ready to go. So I'm going Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanate. As I said, it's match day 30 of 38 now. We are in the big leagues. This is it. This is the run for the title. We have to be putting our strongest teams out every single time. I honestly I think we have to be prioritizing the Premier League over the Europa League. The level of competition is higher in the Premier League for a start. So if you're ever going to play a slightly weakened team, it would have to be in the Europa League. We cannot let this chance slip. Mm. Probably shouldn't have used those words. Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanate, best centre-back pair we've got. Definitely starting this game. A left-back with the uncertainty about Andrew Robertson. I'm going to start Costa Simicas. I believe Robbo is okay, though. So maybe we get an appearance from him off the bench. He's probably going to be one of the substitutes. Give him a little bit of a time, get him up to speed. Yeah, just playing it safe with this one, really. And I don't really have an issue with Costa Simicas playing, to be completely honest. You know, he had a spell out with injury himself. Joe Gomez took over that role. But when Simicas was playing during that Robbo injury spell, like he was great and it was a shame that both of them got injured at the same time because then that really put us in a difficult situation that thankfully by the way Joe Gomez 
really helped us out in. He has been an incredible player that's really stepped up this season. But I am going Costa Simicas because he definitely deserves some game time. And right back with Trent out, I'm going Connor Bradley. Again, a player that has had an amazing international break. Got himself a goal as well. I think it was the same game that Robert got injured in as well. It was uh, Northern Ireland playing Scotland. And yeah, amazing goal from Connor Bradley. He has been a breakout talent this season for us. And this gives us an opportunity to give Joe Gomez a bit of a rest because he's been playing every single game going lately even got some time in England squad unbelievably Gareth Southgate picked Joe Gomez good opportunity for Joe Gomez to get a rest and I don't really have a problem with this back line especially when we see what's coming up we're gonna do the midfield together because I feel like this is a package deal I think this it has the potential to be our best possible midfield I just don't think we've seen it enough at the moment which is unfortunate so with Hardy Wendo in the in the DM position amazing you know he's been one of our best players this season cannot fault him at all Alexis McAllister the same I think Alexis McAllister I've said this before probably signing off the summer both of these players are genuinely world class in my opinion and I think Dominic Sabozlai we've seen in spells what he's capable of he also had a really good international break by the way so hopefully he brings that form back with him but I think through various injury spells for different players and the Asian Cup as well we haven't had a chance to see this midfield together enough and I think with enough time to gel and if we can just see more of them i think this has the potential to be our greatest midfield so while all three are fit i'm definitely playing them and let's hope we see some magic from that right wing obviously has to be mo salah still in the race for that golden boot as well so he's going to be fired up he's going to want goals especially as we're coming into the final eight games now of the season but yeah it has to be mo salah when he's fit he obviously plays left wing if we're being honest has to be luis diaz with diogo jota still out injured the choice really comes down to luis diaz or cody gakpo and i actually think I would like to see more from both of them. I'm a little bit disappointed actually with Luis Diaz over the international break. His dad has been talking about how badly Luis Diaz wants to go to Spain. You know, they're talking about Barcelona, Madrid, all these different teams, even Atletico was mentioned. And I just feel like you haven't done enough at Liverpool yet, mate. To be, you know, the season he's had as well. And it, it, I don't know, I just think potentially a little bit disrespectful to be honest, to be talking about going to Barcelona and Madrid and stuff. And I will caveat that by saying his dad did say right now he is committed to Liverpool, but you know, I, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that as soon as he's free in a way with his national side, he can start talking about different teams and where he wants to go. And to be fair, it's not him talking, it's his dad, but it is his dad. Like, you can just be like, can you stop talking about Spain? Tell my man, shut up. Shut up. I just feel like it's a little bit disrespectful. It's not It's not like he's one of these Galactico signings we've made and he's lit the world up and we're thinking, oh, Madrid, they come knocking any day now, like to be talking about Spain, do you know what I mean? It, uh, I'd like to see more goals from Luis Diaz and I think if Diogo Jota was fit, he would definitely be taking up that role at the moment because between between Diaz and Cody Gakpo, Diaz is definitely the better performing player, but you know, the pair of them, I don't think have performed quite as well as I would imagine. Luis Diaz, amazing when he first came in, really hit the ground running, but for one reason or another, obviously everything that happened in his personal life, he's not had quite as good of a season as I would have expected. Hopefully given time, we can see the best of him again, but yeah, I just felt it was a little bit disrespectful to be talking about Spain over the international break, but it's whatever. I think he's still our best option there on the left wing. So, you know, if he scores a few goals, he can make up for that. I guess. And in the strike position, it has to be the GOAT, Darwin Nunes. Uh, he's fit to play. He took that break over the international break, you know, the difference between that and Luis Diaz went away with his team, told the world about how badly he wants to go to Spain. Darwin Nunes didn't even go away. He said, I'm staying right here. I'm getting myself fit. I'm ready to go for this running for the title. So that's why he's the GOAT. Look out! Fair play to Darwin Nunes, he's fit, it's worked out for us. If that was a Jurgen Klopp master plan, then fair play to Jurgen Klopp because it's worked, he's fit, he's ready to go. It's the title running, we need our best squad out there and Darwin Nunes certainly is involved in that. So that's my team, that's what I'm going with. As far as score predictions go, we have to look at those off the stats again. Absolutely Liverpool dominant with 71%. We've got to win this game, it's at Anfield. You know, it's a chance to go back top of the table before this City-Arsenal clash. So huge game for us to lay a statement down before they kick off, put the pressure on them. I'm going to go with, I actually think this, right, this has potential to be a huge scoreline for Liverpool because Brighton aren't in a great place right now and they've got terrible away form. Um, and I'm not just saying this to sit on the fence, but it also has the potential to be a banana skin because Brighton are one of those teams where they can just sort of show up against the big side, against one of the big six and... We've seen that time and time again. So it honestly could be a massive blowout win for Liverpool, but it also could be a banana skin. But I'm going to go with the prior. Um, well, I'll go. I'm going to go Liverpool 3, Brighton 0. 
So not a massive scoreline, but I think it does have the potential to be one, but I'm playing it a little bit safe. Liverpool 3, Brighton 0. Whatever happens, we have to win this game. Fingers crossed, let's have it. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already to stay up to date with all our news coming this summer in regards to signings and the new manager and all that good stuff. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.